Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to a Friday evening message. We'd like to start with some prayer and then some singing and then the message that the Lord has laid upon my heart for today. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all of your goodness and we thank you for this opportunity once again to share your word. We pray, Lord, for all those that are able to listen to this message, those that tune in, and we pray, dear Lord God, that you would bless them. We're praying, dear Lord Jesus, for all those that are working in our essential services, and the nurses and doctors and everyone that is working so very, very hard all around us. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your strength and for your health that you give us. We just ask, Lord, now that you would bless as we sing, praise, and honor you with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us begin with the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. Thank 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. anybody 
or anything to help him with regards to any improvements or changes. God is perfect. And we have a verse here in Matthew chapter 5. It is verse 48, the last verse in this particular chapter, that says the following. Jesus is speaking here, Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, there are two things that we can take from this particular verse, and it's going to lead us into the message this evening. The first one is that if we go to the latter part of the verse, it's very clear, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So this verse, Jesus here speaking, makes it very clear that God is perfect. Now he's admonishing, or he's encouraging God's followers, the rest of us, to be perfect as well. But you see, for us, be ye therefore perfect, to me there is an uh, implication there, or a suggestion, better word, suggestion, that we're not there yet. And certainly if we look in the mirror, if we look at uh, what's going on in the world, we recognize that we are everything furthest away from perfection. We have faults, we have failures, we have um, mistakes that we make on a regular basis. If you're watching these videos, you'll recognize, oops, there's a little mistake, or there's something that wasn't quite right. It happens, and that's because we're human. But God is perfect, and Jesus is encouraging us here to move along that road, to not stay where we are here at the moment, but to strive. Strive for what? Strive for that perfection. The perfection that can only be found in God, that we need God's help to achieve, but certainly something that we should keep pushing for. So don't be satisfied with the fault or the failure that you have, or that I have, but rather let us come to the Lord and ask God to help us with that blemish in our personality, or the problem that we have with our emotions, uh, whatever it happens to be. God is here to help us, and that's why this evening our title is Working on Me. Now to be very, very honest with you, I didn't really settle on a topic for this message until this morning, and I was a little bit restless about the whole thing. Uh, sometimes I've got a list of messages you know, they sort of seem to come flooding in. Other times, there doesn't seem to be something that obvious. And that was the case this morning. I got up this morning and was a little worried because I didn't have a message to share. There wasn't anything that the Lord had laid upon my heart. But I went to my computer, and uh, one of the first things I do is check my email. And so I clicked on the little envelope at the bottom of my computer and my email program came up but it didn't come up as usual it came up with a big square in the middle that said there was an update waiting and as I thought about that the Lord laid upon my heart this idea of updates and that of course links to this idea of the Lord is still working on me I trust he's still working on you. We are always in need of updates. So I looked at what was going to be corrected in the update, pushed a little button, and the computer proceeded to download and then install and ask me a few questions and I had to click a few buttons. And then the program started up as it did always, and to me, I couldn't really see that anything had changed. What was, you know, there was a big list of all the things that they were correcting, and yet, when the program was running, it looked relatively the same, but I'm trusting that it was actually running better than it was before. You see, an update doesn't really mean that something is completely wrong and it's worth throwing in the garbage. An update means there's a problem 
And somebody has the solution to that problem, and so they're sending us the solution that is going to make the program better than it was before. We're not going to throw it out. There are lots of things about the program that are working just fine. As a matter of fact, probably the majority of the things in the program are working just fine. But there are these, and they call them fixes, that need to be put in place so that it's going to run a little bit better. And as I was thinking about this idea of an update and myself, it suddenly sort of hit me, and I suppose that's the Lord's Spirit, sort of struck me and said, you know what? There are lots of things in my life that need fixing. And sometimes we struggle on our own to try and fix these things. But the one that can fix them the best is the one who created us in the first place. You see, the person that designed the program for your computer is probably the person or the team of people that are coming up with the proper fixes because they know best how that program runs. And nobody knows me, nobody knows you better than God does. So the Lord can fix the bugs, the problems that we have in our lives. And it's actually a great blessing that He's still working on me and He's still working on you. That's something we can be thankful for. So this evening, I want to take a look at three sort of important factors that come into play with regards to updates. And then we're going to take a look at some scriptural verses that support this. Um, looking at the idea, of course, of uh, the fact that God is perfect and needs no updating, but the things that man makes, or the person that a man is, man as in mankind, is, is flawed. Let me give you another example. Perhaps this has happened to you as well. I recently had to install a new device. It happened to be a printer. Brand new. Got it from the store. And uh, I had somebody come. I was good. Had somebody come. Put it in my trunk. I never got out of the car. They, you know, looked at my receipt through the window. Um, all of that kind of thing that's going on right now. So, but I had to get this new printer. The old one wasn't for working anymore. Got the new printer, brand new. Set it up. Followed all the instructions. And what was the first thing that it needed to do? It needed to install an update. And I thought, wait a minute, it's brand new. It hasn't even been out of the box. But you see, what man makes requires constant fixing. And while we are here on this earth, though the Lord is perfect, He didn't make us perfect. Not yet. And that's part of His plan. Because, you see, we need to recognize, just like what comes out of the box, brand new, that people make, needs an update, we need constant updates as well. We're not there yet. We're not perfect like God is. Three factors that play into this idea of being updated. Well, the first one has to do with the fact that everything comes from God. If everything comes from the Lord, how do we get it from God? How do we get what we need from the Lord? Short answer, we need to be connected. You see, my computer, my printer, whatever device, your television set perhaps, or anything else that you've got that is electronic or computerized in some way, shape, or form, it is never going to get updated 
if it's not connected. That printer could have stayed in the box forever. And it wouldn't have mattered if there were all kinds of updates out there that it needed until it was connected. There were no updates coming to it. And for you and I to be improved, to be worked on by the Lord, or if you want to continue to use the term updated by God, we need to be connected to Him. You're not going to find anything that makes you better in the world around you. You see, people recognize they need to be doing things to get better, but people don't always go to the right source. So they ask somebody else, and they read some book, or they listen to a tape, or they go to the library and they get self-help stuff, or whatever it happens to be. All of that recognize these are things coming from sources that are also flawed. So to get the best update, you don't go to a source that has its own problems. As God's people, we go to the Master. We go to the Lord. He's perfect. You can't say that about anything here in this life, on this planet. God is perfect. The only one that was ever perfect on the planet was Jesus. And so we have to recognize that to get the proper update, you have to be connected to the Lord. Turn with me to James chapter 1. On this idea of being connected, James chapter 1, Verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I wanted to start with that verse because, you see, it makes it very, very clear that when we connect to the Lord, we are going to get the perfect gift. We are going to get the good gift. In other words, what God sends us is always going to make us better. It is never going to harm us. It is never going to cause us to take some steps back. You see, I'm going to keep going back to the computer sort of example. There are times, maybe you've experienced this, where you ask, you tell the computer, and it says it needs to do an update. You do the update, and then, in fact, it doesn't work. The computer is in worse shape after the update than it was before the update. And then you have to go back, and you have to reinstall the old version, because the old version was better. You see, what man makes doesn't always improve things. What God gives us always makes things better. It is always a good and perfect gift that comes from God. And of course, if I turn with you to John chapter 15, we have a very um, familiar section of scripture in John chapter 15 about the vine. I thought, oh, everybody knows these verses. Yeah, well, I suppose we do. But the important thing is, is that we remember them. We remember them. Right? And so when it says in John chapter 15 and verse 5, I am the vine, that's Jesus speaking, God being referred to God and Jesus. Ye are the branches, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. So, you see, to get the good and perfect gift, we need to be connected to the good and perfect one. Perfect one. And that connection to him allows us then to function on his behalf. And God is always looking to make us stronger so that we can work for him, so that we can give honor and glory to him, so that we can be worthy ambassadors of his. And so God 
wants us to be better. We, he wants us to be improved. Therefore, he is constantly willing to work on us. And we need to maintain our connection with him in order to get that update sent or downloaded, I suppose you could say, from heaven to each and every one of us. That's number one. Number two, updates come after an examination. Updates come after an examination. How does the computer or the server or the whoever's out there somewhere, how do they know that your computer needs an update? How do they know that? Well, when you turn on your computer, those programs run, and somewhere in there, there's a, com a computer program that comes in and examines what you already have. And so, there are times when I've downloaded something, and then I see that there's an update, and I punch for the update, and then it ends up telling me, oh, you already have the latest version. In other words, you don't need the update. It's already as good as it's going to get. Something has examined the computer programs that I have in my computer and knows whether an update is required or not. Examination by the Lord is required. And so... When we come to the Lord with that connection, we are also thankful, blessed, to know that God is looking at us. God is checking us out. God is examining each and every one of us because we may try and hide our fault or our failure, but God knows exactly what that fault or failure is. We may not understand what is required to help us out with a particular situation, and often we pray one way, and God, who knows better than we do, knows that, hey, what that person is praying for, that's not going to fix the problem. Here's what needs to happen. You see, the examination of God on each and every one of our lives is critical because that way the Lord knows exactly what we need, when we need it, and He provides it at just the right time. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This examination really happens in two ways. So I wanted to give you a verse for each of the ways that that examination happens. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. But let man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. The section of scripture that uh, many churches, and certainly ours, we use this section of scripture for communion. And it gets read every time we have communion. And it suggests very strongly, let a man examine himself. One of the ways that we begin this whole process is through self-examination. So while I did say that we don't often get it right, that's not to say that we shouldn't make that attempt. And there are many times, I suppose, where we actually do know, maybe deep down inside, what is required, but we're not always that eager to admit it. However, the Bible does encourage us to examine ourselves. To do that, you need a standard. How do you know if something's crooked? How do you know if something's broken? How do you know what it's supposed to be like if you don't have a perfect standard or perfect example to compare it to? So as a Christian, 
I don't examine myself and then take myself and compare myself to the world and say, I want to be like them. I look at myself and then I turn to, I go to the perfect one. And that is God. We established that right at the beginning. And I look at God's word and I look at his standard and then my examination of myself is compared to that. That's one way that this examination process takes place. The second one, we find an example in Psalm 139. So Psalms 139. Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, O God. There is the examination that takes place of ourselves. Now remember, I'm not perfect. So when I do an examination of myself, it is highly, highly unlikely, I might even say impossible, that me, being not perfect, can perform a perfect examination upon myself. Can't be. However, I can ask God to come and examine me. I can ask Him to do that examination. I can ask Him to help me, even with my own self-examination. And so the Holy Spirit can reveal to us, or we often use that image of the Lord shining a light upon us, or searching, looking inside of our heart, in our mind, our intentions, our thoughts. You see, if we ask the Lord to do that, He's very willing to do that. And he will come in and he will examine and he will then provide to us. He'll say, here's the update that you need. Here is the way that you need to walk. Walk ye in it. And so God provides the solution to the problems that we then see and that he sees. But there's one last step. And this is probably the most critical piece. Number three. I wrote down here. You need to hit install in order for the update to happen. You need to hit install. On my computer, the screen pops up, says, there's an update. There are fixes. Here are the things that need to be fixed, and this is going to fix those things. But you know what? There's a little button that says install. Or I might say it says go. Or I might say do it. You see, in the end, the choice as to whether or not we have this update given to us is completely up to you and up to me. And God designed it that way. God made it that we have a free choice. If we're connected to Him, the Lord has these gifts for us. He can examine us, and we can be shown, God can show us, these are the things where I can help you. Here's some place where you are weak, and we all have places where we're weak. Here's a temptation, an area of temptation that you, are, you might struggle with, or I might struggle with. And God says, there it is. And here's the solution for it. But you and I, we need to still willingly say, install. Yes, Lord. Give me that. Help me with that. You see, that's critical. Because the update isn't going to happen unless we're willing for the Lord to work on us. James chapter 4. Two more verses. James chapter 4. 
verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I've uh, preached on that verse before. And we often like this second part about, and he will flee from you. But there's a resisting that needs to take place. But you see, before that resisting takes place, we have to submit ourselves, therefore, to God. In other words, say yes to God. Let God have control. Hit the install button. Tell God, yes, you have your way with me. Not my will, not my mind, but yours. You know what's best. There's trust. There's faith. But think about all the different things we trust and we have faith in. This morning, I put my faith and trust in a little square on my computer screen. I put my faith and trust on the fact, what I assume was the fact, that what this little screen was telling me, oh, you've got these problems, this is going to fix it. I believed it. I hit install. To be honest with you, I didn't even hesitate. Didn't hesitate for a moment. Completely trusted that what was going to happen was something that was good. Now, if I put my faith and trust in something like that, that is a natural thing, how much more must we, must I, put my faith and trust in the Lord? And so when God says that we are to submit ourselves to Him, that should be the easiest thing in the world. We shouldn't hesitate. There should be no question. Because God never is going to do something that is for our bad. It's not never going to be bad for us. That didn't come out too very well today. God never does anything to hurt you. He never does anything to hurt me. And so trusting in Him should be instantaneous. There should be no fear, no doubt, no question. God is going to do what is best for me. So submit yourself to Him. Hit install. If the Lord says, here's something that's going to help you, don't question. Don't doubt. Trust Him. Hit install. One more verse, Revelation, chapter 3. I always like to give you a few verses that support the message that I'm trying to bring across to you. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Familiar. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's Jesus. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Does Jesus break the door down? Does Jesus force his way in? No, he does not. He does not. He says here, he's waiting for that person to hear his voice and to do what? Open the door. Hit install. Jesus is right there. Right there, knocking. Showing you and showing me what He can do to make us that little bit better. That little bit stronger. Showing us what He can do to help us so that we can do His work why would we hesitate? Stay connected to Him. The good things come from the Lord. Let Him examine us every day. Every day. So that each and every day, when the Lord says, here, here's a verse. Here's a message. Here's a song. Here's something I have for you that's going to help you with that problem. It's going to make things better. Hit install. Trust Him. Open the door and let the Lord come in. 
And so we praise him. He's still working on us. Each and every day, he hasn't lost his patience. He hasn't grown weary. He hasn't become bored with you and with me, with our problems, with our weakness. No. God is still there every day working on me. Willing to work on you. All we have to do is hit install. Let's pray. And so, dear Lord Jesus, we come to you right now asking you, Lord God, help us to maintain a strong connection. Help us, dear Lord Jesus, to ask you each and every day, search me, O oh Lord. Help me to examine myself, O oh Lord. Let me see, show me the places where I am weak. Open my eyes that I might see. And help me to acknowledge that I need your help. And when you then, Lord, take me to that part of the scripture that provides me with the improvement, provides me with the source of help for my problem, provides me with a fix for the bugs that might be in my life. Help me not to hesitate, but help me to hit install and to be thankful and to be so grateful that you love me enough, that you love us enough, that you have something for us each and every day that will strengthen us and help us through every situation. And so, Lord, I pray that you will strengthen us and give us, dear Lord Jesus, what we need, that we may be better workers for you. And we do all for your honor and for your glory. 